It has been so cold over the last two weeks. This is the exterior temperature right now. This is not accurate, but this is my little weather station outside. It's showing minus 22.4. That's not accounting for the wind chill. Wind chill is when the wind blows and it causes things to get even colder. Uh, we love that term in Canada and we use it all over the place. Eh, makes us feel better that uh, things are colder than they actually appear. But let me tell you, this is super, super cold. Matter of fact, I have a frozen hot water pipe that runs through this plenum and I have a little space heater in here and it froze last night so I had to put it in again last night to uh, get the hot water to flow. So uh, that's getting sorted out. But uh, you know, there's my exterior. I hope you can see that. Look how cold it is outside. So today I just want to take a little bit of time and just talk about battery losses, range losses in the winter months in these supreme colds because I'm getting a lot of questions about that. So one of the first things uh, that I do before I go anywhere with my car is to run the Tesla app and actually turn on the climate. You'll see here that uh, I have a full charge. Now I normally charge to 90% but because it's been so cold and the battery is losing, you know, some energy in this cold that, uh, you know, it's currently showing 86%. So what I do here is I go into climate and I will turn on the heating in the car, jump that up to about 22, 25. And you'll see here that it'll go right here in a moment. And it's showing the interior temperature of the car right now is uh, about minus nine. In a few moments or whatever, we should get another little icon down here showing that it's preheating the battery pack. And that's critical. By doing this and leaving the car plugged in, what you end up doing is you pull energy from the house and not the battery to preheat your car and the battery pack. And that's critical because if you don't do that, um, it has the energy has to come from somewhere. So where does it come from? Well, it's gonna come from the battery pack and of course it reduces your range. So the trick is with your car, whether it's a Model 3 or any other car is in these cold months is leave it plugged in and do a preheat so that it starts circulating and getting um, heat throughout the car. This process, I recommend you do at least half an hour before you leave, uh, maybe even up to an hour before, and uh, that will really help uh, mitigate some of your range losses. Uh, there's the icon. See that little red, right? That's the battery heater now that's been kicked in, so it's also heating the battery pack. Hopefully you can see that. Look at that, it's uh, minus 20 Celsius whatever that is in Fahrenheit. It's, uh, it is really cold. Now let's go look at the UMC. No, not the UMC, I'm using my wall connector. Oh yeah, okay, so you see the little green light moving? See, it says charging is complete. I charged to 90%. It's not charging. In this firmware, what it's doing is that it's uh, pulling from the grid because my car is plugged in. So it's using that to, uh, to heat the interior of the car. And you can see a little bit there. And there's no snow on the windows because it's in the process of, you know, defrosting things. If you, can, you can probably hear that running a little bit. Yeah, a little bit frozen there. And there's the cabin running. All right, so there's the sign of a cold battery. Focus. Oh, it was a snowflake, now the snowflake is gone. So it looks like the battery, whatever whatever threshold that the battery needs to be at for the heater uh, to be on is, is now gone. So now showing minus 25, as you can see. Um, there's still energy coming into the car. And then let's take a look at the charging. You can see here, charging is definitely complete, but it's uh, heating up the car. So let's look at the HVAC settings. So I have the seat heaters on and Let's look at this. Oh, that's unusual. I usually have that to, to keep from fogging the, uh, the car. I find that this is about the best combination. Fresh air intake, heat on the floor, heat on the windows, and the fan set to five, six, or seven, depending somewhere in there. That keeps my windows from fogging. I don't have any defogging agent on the windows yet. Anyhow, so that's what works for us in the car. So here's the other thing here, uh, on the energy graph you see um, we're currently just sitting idle right now, it's using some amount of energy to uh, run the HVAC or whatever. This is your regen, right now I basically have no regen at all. And then up here my power is uh, a little bit limited. Uh, normally when the heat is uh, completely, or the battery pack is completely heated, these little dashed lines go away. 
So this is limiting how much power I can accelerate at. Eventually, when everything's all warm, all these dash lines will go away. But this, all, the regen here will also change dependent on, on some of your settings. And I'm going to talk about the differences between the Model S, the Model X, and the Model 3 because uh, you don't get any of this stuff on the Model 3, at least yet. And I'm going to explain the differences in the uh, heating uh, system between the two cars so you can get a better understanding of some changes that Tesla's made uh, between the car technologies. So let's talk about range loss in the cold winter months because one of the most common questions I've been getting since the last video that I did when Yo-Yo uh, Shui came through with his Model 3 on his uh, Model 3 road trip into Toronto is he made some comments to the folks at the crowd that uh, he was seeing as much as 50% range loss because of the bitter cold that we've been getting. Pretty, this feels more like minus 30. Um, so, yeah, we're getting used to it. The car isn't, the car is having a very difficult time with the uh, temperatures. Um, so you got like half the range, maybe? Definitely half the range, if not less. Uh, we're crunching the numbers, but on average so far, um, between negative 20 and negative 10, we're getting about 55, 56% uh, uh, optimal efficiency of what, what, what Tesla rates it to be. Yeah, uh, so. so people have been asking me, um, have I been experiencing the same thing? And the answer is yes. Um, but that's just kind of the nature. So what we're going to do here is kind of explain it and parse it a little bit so you understand what's really affecting um, your range loss in the winter months. First thing I want to describe is how the S and the X are set up and how it differs from the Model 3. So first thing you need to know is that the Model S and the Model X both share the same uh, drivetrain architecture in that there's a cabin heater that's six kilowatts and there's also a battery heater as well that's another six kilowatts so when both of them are turned on uh, there's potential for 12 kilowatts worth of energy being pulled out of the battery pack in order to heat the cabin and the battery so in the extreme cold that of course affects your range because the energy has to come from somewhere and it's coming out of the battery pack which is of course energy that can't be used for driving. One of the things that you can do in the S and the X is you can turn on something called range mode and that's a setting on the screen and what that does is that it cuts the power to the cabin heater by 50% so 3 kilowatts and it disables the battery pack heater completely. Now the net effect of that however is that your battery pack now is not warm, so you can't pull as much energy out of it at any given time. And that's why I showed you on the screen a little bit earlier, I get the little dashed lines at the top. Um, the other thing too that it affects is that when you try to do a supercharge, uh, a cold battery doesn't supercharge very fast. I experienced that myself uh, when we went on our trip at Christmas time, plugged in and, and wasn't getting a very fast charge until the battery pack had warmed up. But the net effect is because you're not using quite as much energy to do both of those things that you gain a little bit of, of range. Now, how does that differ? on the Model 3. Well, the Model 3 doesn't have a range mode at all. And the reason for that is because Tesla's done a completely different architecture on the battery management uh, heating system and the uh, heat and cooling for the cabin and the battery pack on the Model 3 in the sense that the Model 3 has a uh, cabin heater that's capable of up to seven kilowatts, but they don't have a battery heater at all in the car. So how are they able to generate heat for the battery pack in order to keep things running? And the way that they're doing that, from my understanding and looking at some documentation, is that they're using waste heat. So they're able to recover waste heat from the power electronics, from the inverters in the battery pack, uh, maybe from the motor itself as well. But again, it's not a free lunch because somehow you have to generate that heat. So what they're doing is that they're probably running some of those components a little harder than they would in order to recoup some of that lost energy. So it's not particularly as a, a well there's always trade-offs of course so a battery heater um, like an actual ceramic heater will generate uh, a lot of extra heat but of course it, it you know the, the energy has to come from the battery pack itself waste heat again is not quite as efficient so on and so forth so the bottom line is that you're not getting any free lunch and of course it affects all the cars equally because you know there's there are losses in heat transfer energy so what why did they do this for the model 3 you might be asking well I do believe that in some cases, it's part of a cost savings measure by not having an extra battery pack, heater it in there as well, some extra, uh, probably some extra plumbing and so on and so forth. Um, but the other part of it could be, you know, when they started looking at the whole stack of the car in terms of cost savings and efficiencies, um, you know, they have a lot of data, of course, when they've been building the S and the X now for the last five years. Probably the engineers and they sat down and said, well, what if? What if we did this? What if we did that? Maybe we can get away with not using a heater. The bottom line is that 
if you get a Model 3 and it's super, super cold, and I'm talking like minus 20 or more, you're going to see some serious range loss on the car. So if you live, live in a colder climate, as we've been saying all along, a, bitter, uh, a bigger battery pack certainly pays for itself if you do long distance driving. Now, our car is a 75 kilowatt battery pack. It's the same uh, kilowatt hour, I should say. Uh, same thing as the Model 3. Uh, of course, this is a heavier car. And I've seen some range loss on it, of course. Uh, you know, this is rated at, what, 384 kilometers um, in the summer months. In the winter, I'm seeing about half of that. But for daily driving, it doesn't matter. For everything that we do, we've never run out of power. I, I don't worry. I don't have the range anxiety. The truth will come out a little bit later when we perhaps do a trip in February when it's almost as cold as we've been experiencing now. Uh, these bitter cold temperatures that you've been hearing about are not very common for December for us. It's usually quite seasonal. Matter of fact, this, this week... Um, I think we're going to see some plus temperatures up to probably plus four or plus five. Uh, so for us to see minus 35, that's uh, it's not very common to see. Anyhow, so I hope that explains some of the things that are going on. So if you're looking at a Model 3 and you live in a cold climate, it really does pay to pay the extra uh, for the extra battery pack, for the larger battery pack rather than the standard. If you're trying to weigh out the differences, maybe uh, you're thinking about, well, I can't afford autopilot and the larger battery pack. In a colder climate, I'll tell you, that the larger battery pack is certainly worth the extra dollars. That's where you should be putting your money if you can afford it. Anyhow, hope that helps. And uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Model 3 Owners. Check out the forum at model3ownersclub.com. And we'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks for watching.